Welcome to another episode of the Agency Intelligence Podcast, where we're bringing you real agents inside real family agencies, giving you the real information and not the fake stuff that everyone wants you to hear. My name is Mike Crowley, your guest host today on the Agency uh, Intelligence Podcast Network, uh, and I am thrilled to have my good friend, Carrie Reynolds, joining me uh, to discuss business and family agencies. So, Carrie, how are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Uh, it is nice to see you, uh, hear you. Uh, it has been a while and uh, <laughs> I am looking forward to the days that we are all back together at Amen. events, um, talking, talking business, talking how things are going and not talking what's going on with the world. And we can stick to the insurance uh, yeah. side of things. <laughs> Um, now, if if the loyal listeners um, do not know who Carrie is, um, that means you have not been paying attention to the digital marketing space over the past five, six, or even longer years. Um, Carrie is one of the pioneers when it comes to digital marketing. Um, when I first met Carrie, which was probably back, uh, we probably connected in 2016. She was one of the first people in the insurance space that I connected with um, before my first innovation conference in Orlando where I listened and heard her being on different panels, different things, talking digital marketing with the likes of, you know, the Chris Paradiso's, the Mike Stromso's and the Ryan Hanley's of the world uh, that, you know, a lot of household names. Carrie was one of those um, when I was doing my research, listening to others. So, you know, if you don't know who she is, make sure you deep dive into, you know, the past, you know, five years, because she has been, uh, a true digital marketing expert uh, for years. If you don't know her by her name, Carrie, you might know her by her nickname, the insurance goddess, <laughs> which I do want to get into a little bit of that uh, in a little bit here. Um, now, uh, before we get into a few things, tell the loyal listeners um, how you joined your family agency and a little background about your agency. Okay, absolutely. So like many uh, I call us insurance brats because, you know, like army brats, I say insurance brats because like many others, I grew up in the business. My father actually just celebrated his 50th anniversary um, in insurance just a couple of weeks ago. That's awesome. And uh, he started in 71. Um, and then he went and worked for an agency in 77, I believe. He was there for about 10 years. And then he opened up his agency in, I think it was 88, as I sit here and think about that. And so I've always, you know, I was born in 73. So I literally grew up in that industry. Now, maybe when I was younger, I wasn't as aware. But as I got older, you know, dad's at the office, dad's doing this. And we talk a little bit, but it was just always kind of there in the background. So um, fast forward through, you know, high school graduation and I went off to college to get my degree. And it was about a month before I graduated from college. Oh, let me back up. I did work at the office doing some filing and stuff on like school breaks, summer breaks. I think everybody's done that too. Yep. So a lot of people are used to that. But so I was in and out of the office a lot. So anyway, I get to one month before uh, college graduation. And for whatever reason, I did not have a job. And for whatever reason, it didn't really occur to me that was a big deal until that <laughs> month before graduation. <laughs> I thought, wait a second, I'm probably supposed to have this job. So I remember, I absolutely remember the day I called him. It was during the week and it was uh, in the morning and I called the office and I was, I was crying, sobbing. I don't have a job. You know, one of those that teenage girls are so good at. <laughs> and uh, I'll never forget what he told me because this is just dad. Um, he said, Carrie, calm down, calm down, breathe. You know, it's okay. He says, here's, here's what we're going to do. He said, why don't you come and work at the office? He goes, and if, uh, even if it doesn't work out, he said, you'll get the experience that put on your resume. And so then you'll have that. You can go off somewhere else. You know, it's a great way to start. And he said, then, but if it does work, great. And the thing people need to know is that, honestly, he never once pushed me to join the agency. Not once. It never came up in conversation. It was not like, you're going to take over someday. You're going to be here. No, not once. Yep. He was pretty cool like that. Um, and so anyway, that was the, uh, I graduated from college in May of 96 and I will be celebrating 25 years, um, in, you know, like a month. Wow. So I, I don't know. I, it was a good choice. It's funny how that happens, but I'm grateful. Um, I started out just as an employee, and then uh, as time went on, 
you know, I got a little bit more involved, started learning more about the business aspect of it all. We became partners, formed a new LLC, and I think it was 2002 or 2003. Okay. And so then he was a majority partner, then I was minority, blah, blah, blah. And so then we made joint decisions and I had more of a handle on the business end of how things work, yep. you know, HR stuff, taxes, you know, the whole nine yards. And, uh, and then just last year, I became the full owner. So Ooh. it's just been a little, just a little over a year ago. It was April 1st that that all went down. Um, and now dad works for me. That's awesome. He's he's semi-retired, which after 50 years, by all means, please. please. Yeah. 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 I mean, his office is still here. He does uh, like Medicare supplements now two days a week. Awesome. So he comes in. I mean, yeah, it works. It works really well for him. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's kind of the story. It's it's really crazy how it worked out because nobody ever intends to get into this industry. It just doesn't work that way. It's a happy accident. Yeah. And, and I, I think that's I, definitely I, where, you know, the. Yeah. Um, majority of people that, you know, we've talked to over the years that yes. have been in those same oh. shoes. It's, it's like, you know, Hey, why don't you come try this out? You know, it's never a push. Nobody, you know, nobody in that other generation pushes it. And I sit in the shoes that we're in now today. And I think, wow, do I want to push, you know, my kids, you know, right. do you want to push your kids in the business right. exactly. based on, you know, what we know now, what we do now, what, you know, all these other things. And I think I would push, uh, more so than, you know, our, you know, the previous generation did just because you see the type of living you can make in the insurance industry. Um, now, everybody we know is not going to be a perfect fit, but it's it's one of those things where I definitely can see the generational differences um, where that generation that de definitely didn't push. They're like, oh, yeah, feel free to come in and, you know, mm -hmm. try it, try it out and, you know, help us out here. And if you like it and how many people that we hear this from actually like it and stay. I feel like, you know, it's a big majority and right. and now of them, now a lot of them have made, you know, great livings and, and great yeah. careers out of it. So, right, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great story to tell about how, you know, the family agencies have go, go from multiple generations, where they come into play, how they, how they go. It's never a, oh yeah, they forced me in it or I, you know, or any, pro you know, you don't see the problems there, right? Problems, right. problems come another way. Right. Um, you know, I want, I, you know, yeah. I, I mentioned briefly about, you know, your, your past uh, moniker, mm -hmm. I think, I think it is, is the correct wording on that, but um, yeah. of the insurance goddess, yep. which you created, I, I don't know how many years ago, but uh, it was about, I think 2009, believe it or not. Yeah, okay. that sounds about right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, we're recording this in 2021 for anyone that's listening to this many years from now. <laughs> um, so we're talking 12 years ago, yeah. well before the likes of video and mm -hmm. all this other stuff we're mm -hmm. pushing into the marketing space. Right. I have two questions regarding it. How okay. did it come in into play? Okay. But then what did dad think of this? <laughs> okay. This is classic. Um, so anyway, that, so that character came about uh, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I took a class on social media at our local like career center. Because okay. I, I knew it was something, but I didn't know what it was. And I know it was up and coming. And I was like, I bet maybe I should learn more. So one of the things they said in the class was, you know, pick one thing out of this class that you want to implement. All right. And so the one thing I thought of was blogging. I've okay. always loved to read. I've loved to write. And I thought that would be a natural fit. I was like, I can explain insurance to people. People will be able to understand it. My problem was there is nobody in their right mind that wants to read an insurance blog. Seriously, <laughs> how boring is that? Seriously, True I statement. barely want to read them. So who else wants to read them? Yep. So I said, I need, I need a hook to get people to be interested in what I have to say. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know even how it came about. I might have been reading something else where they said something goddess, you know, maybe travel goddess. And I thought, what about insurance goddess? It just, I don't know why, it just popped in my head. And I thought, well, if I call it Confessions of an Insurance Goddess, that was the original blog name. I thought, ooh, that's kind of titillating. Maybe that'll get people interested. Sure. And so that's kind of how I ran with it. And that's how I started writing about insurance. And the character that I created from that um, was actually on the suggestion of a friend of mine who has a sign shop here okay. in town. We, she was, she was a good friend of mine at the time. And she said, you know what, you should really do something with that, that name. Maybe you should create a character. 
And I poo pooed it. I was like, Shh, really? And then I actually gave it some thought and I thought, you know, well, maybe that would be okay. And I, I, this is, it's literally one of the craziest things I've ever done because I said, okay, I had another friend that lit, that her office was next door. She was an embroiderer and she could sew from scratch. And I said, if I buy in a costume, can you sew? You know, she was like, well, yeah, you know, get me the pattern. And uh, okay. And I let her make some of the choices because I don't, that's not my thing. <laughs> and so I said, here's the pattern, you know, you know, kind of put your little accents on it and whatever. And so she delivered the costume to me. And, um, and I, the next month was going to be like a downtown business event. And I said, I'm just going to debut it. I'm going to show up in this outfit. I'm going to pass out some cookies with my website address. And that's literally how it started. And the craziest thing about that is, um, not, not only did I want people to read what I wrote, but I also did it for a couple of other reasons. I, I did it to make insurance a little bit more fun because I'm sorry, it's boring. It yep. just is. Mm -hmm. I wanted to personalize it and humanize it a little bit too. And so I took the character. I don't do much with it anymore. And not that that's a bad thing, but you know, it's still there. The costume's hanging on the back of my door. I mean, I've got the stuff at the ready if I need it. But I eventually took the character around town and I would take pictures in front of businesses. I would show up That's to awesome. businesses. Yeah. And I would, and you know, the best thing about it is besides that people thought I was crazy is that it made it just fun. It wasn't all, you know, insuring agreements and exclusions and exactly. blah, 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 blah. It was like, Hey, this is kind of fun. Let's just have fun with it. And then people well, you became uh, known so they, in the community. Like, well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So I became known in the community, but then word got it, I don't know, in the insurance space, maybe just because, you know, the blog had a picture of me in the costume. And so, and I'm telling you what, the, um, the podcast and the request for articles came fast and furious. It was unbelievable. Um, it was crazy there for a while. I mean, some of the big magazines, you know, from the insurance space, of course, not like Time Magazine, um, contacted me and said, hey, we want to send somebody over to do an interview. I mean, I even have all of my, I call it my brag book. Yeah. And I have all this stuff. And there's like all kinds of stuff. Well, um, think, well think back to 2009 in the insurance yeah, yeah, yeah. space. That's who, the beginning of the digital who, marketing. Who was doing anything? This is, no, you know, nobody, nobody Jay, was. Jay, Jason oh. talks about that a lot where, you know, yeah. you know, where he, he and Hanley became friends because they were at these events talking and well, they were he, the only ones he talking and about I it. became friends because we were writing at the same time we started blogging about the same time so we would trade ideas it's funny how that all comes together yeah. but um so yeah so i mean so then there was stuff everywhere in the, and so that's where it really spread in in the industry um people were um yeah it was just crazy now i'm going to tell you it was one of the best things I could have done because it also got me speaking engagements. I got to write for other publications, which writing is still my thing. Uh, so even like, um, you know, PI of Indiana was one. I wrote for their magazine. You know, I wrote for the, the PIA National Marketing Guide. I wrote an article. So it really paved the way for me to do some great things within the industry. Absolutely. That being said, there were a lot of haters. I know we're not on this podcast to talk about it, but I'll tell you this. The haters made me stronger Absolutely. because they said some, they were awful. They were just awful. And, uh, you know, after a while, you know, I kind of, but then my, my core group of insurance friends kind of rallied against me. And I always remember that and I'm grateful for it. But then I look back and I go, yeah, who's laughing now? Yeah. I mean, right. Exactly. I mean, I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and I didn't hurt anybody in the process. And I really had a good time with it. So that was probably one of the bravest things I ever did because to show up in this Cleopatra looking costume, I mean, people thought I was certifiable. I mean, it, they, they were like, what in the world are you doing? And I was like, well, I'm doing something different and different is not always embraced. No, no. It, not in insurance. Not in insurance. The insurance Correct. industry is very, you know, there's this box that you stay in and go, he, heaven forbid you go outside of it. Um, so, so that, that brings up the, the, the question, mm -hmm. what did, you know, what did mom and dad, you know, in the agency think of that when you either a brought it up or showed up to the event where you're like, you know, 
hey, dad, you know, I know we're, you know, partners in this, but yeah. I'm going to come dressed up as, you know, Cleopatra here and, and go to the local town that he's, you know, been in for, for 20 well, you know, I mean, years, where, you know, this is local, you know, hometown brick and mortar agency, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, coming yeah. and doing this. What did dad think of that? He thought it was the stupidest thing he had ever heard of. <laughs> I'm, I'm quoting, that's a direct quote, yeah. but I'll never forget. Um, there was, I don't remember what it was. It might've been the article that was in American agent and broker. They did a full centerfold spread. It was crazy. They even came and had me pose at our local, uh, the, our, the, our, our theater is kind of famous. It's the only Dutch themed theater, you know, in the United States. Okay. And we did this huge spread. I mean, I'm not joking. And I think it was after that, that he said, I see what you were trying to do now. It was the coolest moment. I was yeah. like, I don't think I'm crazy. I mean, I took a chance and it really, it did pay off in more ways than I actually would have expected because no joke, even today, um, I'll show uh, people, even customers, you know, Hey, it's the insurance goddess. I mean, yeah. that's my brand. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't use it like I once did. Cause it, it, the, that brand doesn't pay the bills. The agency brand does. So you have to figure out where you want to spend your energies, but it still serves. It's still fun, you know. And well, uh, well in the br that initial brand, that individual brand, yeah. connected the agency's brand. Correct. Right. And Correct. and this is when branding was, you know, what, what's branding? It was still pretty new. <laughs> it was new, you know. Digital yeah. digital type stuff is was new. So yep. you know, I love to hear that you know that aha moment that he has right yeah, where he's yeah, like i i see what you did there right i see i, yeah, I see. it was the craziest thing it just like came out of nowhere because i was like look 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 and yeah. he was like i i see i see what you were I, trying to do yeah and you know the customers were like yeah we got the insurance goddess on our side and she'll protect us and you know i mean that's never a bad not that well some people gave me more power than i should have had yeah. i mean i'm still human but it was still good for the agency at the Absolutely. end of the day yeah. So, you know, I want to, I want to talk about the, you know, how, how family agencies, right. You know, how many people would not have made that call that you did, you know, not have pulled the trigger on, you know, creating something because of what dad was going to say here, or mom was going to say here, aunt, uncle, grandma, whatever, whoever's just in your about agency. about everybody, right? Just about because everybody. parents are a huge influence on over you. And when you work, cause mom was here too. So when you work with them, I mean, goodness gracious, you know, I, I get that you're all adults, but it's still mom and dad. Yeah. So you're, you always kind of feel that you need their approval sometimes. And I just did it. And I, I don't know. It was one of those moments where I guess my conviction was stronger than anything else. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Would you suggest that others that are, you know, maybe in similar shoes, right? Where maybe they, whether they have ownership in their agencies or not, mm -hmm. whether they are, you know, going to be hopefully the future mm -hmm. that are potentially taken over. Do you see, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, hey, create, you know, create a character that you can go around to right, town. This, right. this, this can be anything from, you know, mm -hmm. hey, you want to introduce video in your agency or you yeah. want to do blogging yeah. that, you know, nobody, you know, my, my previous generation doesn't believe in, you know, right. what what kind of advice would you give them, um, you know, to help motivate them to make those, those changes or make those pushes themselves when maybe, you know, those parents or the previous generation is not giving the backup for? Well, to be fair, I really think if the person has a, a, a pretty strong relationship with the parents to begin with, then they are probably more likely to listen to the ideas. You know, if there's some tension there, then that may be a problem. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Um, I, I mean, I guess, I, you know, we're in sales, right? So you yep. might have to make a case for why this is a good idea. You yep. may have to do that. And I don't know, every once in a while, maybe somebody's going to have to just do it. <laughs> and... The consequences are what they are. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I try not to live in fear as I've gotten older. I just, I don't think it has a place. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, I mean, if you're strong in your conviction and you think it's a good thing and, and uh, so I, that, that, that's a you great might thing. have to do it. I don't, I don't know. And I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to give bad advice, but I'm also like, you, you know, you got to pull the trigger sometime. Yeah. And, and not to, not to 
plug any writing that I've ever done because I'm not a writer like Carrie is, but mm-hmm. I did do a guest uh, blog post for the agency intelligence website uh, mm-hmm. probably a year ago. Um, I, maybe, maybe not even a year ago, but either ways, it was around this topic. Yeah. And, you know, you saying just, just do it was one of the, you know, the the parts of this uh i now know i now owe nike royalties you realize that (laughs) yeah so um cass will take care of them um you know so it really is you know hey i want to do this i need x you know and and that's the concern you know you had that issue of course and it's you know do I want to buy a video camera? Do I want to buy a microphone or editing software? You know, that's what they're going to look at and say, okay, hey, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, you know, grandma, whoever's in there, yeah, we, right. we need this because I want to do this. And that's where they think gets shut down because it's a cost. It's a cost to the agency. Yeah. It's a cost yeah. to them. And if they don't believe it, they're not going to, you know, agree to it. Cost versus investment. That's the problem. That's, that's, that's a different way of thinking. I think the older generation, they see things more of a cost. We see things as more of an investment. Amen. That's, you know, you can't yeah. put that any, any more perfectly because, yeah. you know, when it comes to technology or when it comes to, you know, marketing things, we do look at it as an investment because we see the ROI and the ROI might not be something that you can measure. Can you, me- can you measure but, the impact you made in that, that costume handing out cookies that first day? Nope, you can't. No, but it's now, you know, 12 years later and people still talk about it. Right. So you right. can say, Hey, this was worth the worth the, the cost to, you know, make our outfit here. Um, and let me, let me add to that just real quick too. Cause I'm like sitting here going, just do it. Well, so maybe if somebody is, I, I get that it could be very, very delicate and very difficult. I totally understand that. It, you know, if you really need to make your case, there are plenty of people in our space now, thank heavens for that, that yeah. have taken the plunge and are doing lots of things that you could use to make your case to the family members. Say, hey, I'm going to put together some, look what he's doing in regards to this topic or this or this or this or this, you know, and maybe even gets, you know, maybe even bring those people in on it and they can talk about it. You know, if they really need like case studies or actual information, get those people, get those people and bring them in to talk to the, you know, some sort of a meeting or a Zoom or whatever it is. And I think... I think that would make more of an impact than even the the kid saying something. And again, thank goodness we have so many people in this space that would be more than willing to do that. I, I feel like I've done that in the past year. I've done that a half a dozen times mm-hmm. with agencies that want to do, you know, whether it's, you know, video proposals through the Advisor Evolved website. Yeah, exactly. Uh, knowing that, you know, I'm a huge component of that and, yeah. you know. Hey, can you talk to our leadership to say why this is a good idea? Can you talk to our sales team about, you you know, X, Y, or Z? Same idea. Um, Same idea. Because these are the things that, you know, it's very easy to brush off the new stuff. Hey, Mm -hmm. do do I really need this? Do I, you know, does my agency, the way it's set up, whether it's a, you know, a three person shop or a 30 person shop, do I need to invest into this? Mm -hmm. And the question isn't, you know, uh, is this going to be, what's this going to cost? It's, you know, how can we implement so that Correct. the investment does make sense? And it's not, you know, looking back saying, Hey, does it take 12 years to recoup our investment? You know, did it, did it pay off year one, year two? Can we see where it's coming in, whether okay. we can measure it or not? And that's the most important thing today. So, you okay. know, the advice of just do it is ju- definitely there, right? It's, it's, but you have to do something. You need to have the conversation. You need to reach out to somebody in that space to say, you know, I see I need this, but they don't believe I need this. Help me. Help yeah, me. Yeah. And like I said, more than enough people would be more than happy to do so. I mean, yeah. absolutely. I, I, me being one of them for that matter. I mean, I got no issue. I've talked to many people <laughs> in over my career about these types of things. Absolutely. So that's, that's awesome. So um, uh, I want to, you know, jump ship here to a different topic. Sure. Right. Um, we uh, are part of multiple, you know, Facebook groups and all that stuff and mm-hmm. uh, together. And there was a, a post that was made uh, <laughs> rel- <laughs> relatively recently. Not, uh, I know mo- what you're going to say. <laughs> a few months back. Um, and they, and, you know, we were, I don't know if we were both tagged in it or, you know, how it even started, but it, it was talked about, you know, how to remove somebody that is, you know, nearing or ready for retirement from the family agency that is a family member um, that, you know, refuses to go when it's past their time and is now causing, you know, disruption in the family or mm-hmm. disruption in um, 
uh, the agency, you know, with yeah. the staff members, with, you know, the, the other ownership, whether, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. Yeah, so, sure. you know, that, that came up, there was probably a hundred comments, you know, real quick. It was, you know, it was entertaining to say the least. Um, but I want to talk about that because yeah. I think that is a huge question that, you know, we get a lot that people talk saying, okay, you know, Hey, my, you know, my mom is 85 years old and refuses to not come in. And, and all she right. does is disrupt the staff. Yeah. You know, there's, there's questions like that, that pop up constantly. And in today's day and age, you definitely need efficiency, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the agency can't run is, is we're just here hanging out. Like maybe it did in the old days. There's a lot right. more going right. on. There's a lot more with technology, you know, it's, I always called it Floyd's Barbershop when dad <laughs> owned it. It was more like people dropped in. He, he'd spend whatever time, you know, they're busy. I mean, I'm cool with that. However, it's slightly different today. <laughs> Correct. You yeah. know, our, our time is be. so much more valuable than, mm -hmm. you know, having the, the, the hour conversation with a cup of coffee with the client yeah. every day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know you, you know, I know you went through something similar, you know, I did as well. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about yours because okay. yours, yours was a little different compared to, to my situation in, in the past. Um, you know, <laughs> Probably, because, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. But yours was, you know, your parents, right? I don't and, wish it on anybody, trust and, me. And so, you know, mm. tell us a little bit about what you had to go through to, you know, you mentioned your dad is still coming in. So, yeah. you know, everyone can figure out who's not coming in from that conversation. <laughs> well, I, um, and, and tell us, you know, how somebody might maybe approach that topic, <sighs> how somebody can, you know, make some headway to, you know, stop a uh, disruption, right? Stop okay. something that is causing, you know, uh, ruffles throughout the agency sure. so that the agency is protected versus, you know, just making sure nobody's angry in the family. Right. And I think that's the problem It's like, do, uh, what's going to happen at Thanksgiving dinner if we disrupt how the agency's running mm -hmm. because there's people in the way, there's different family members in the way, right? How do you not only just separate that, but how do you actually make the the move to say, Hey, it's time for you to go. And, and, you know, what kind of advice can you give to somebody that is in those shoes that you were in, you know, handful of years ago? Yeah. Well, it was just last year. So too bad it wasn't a handful of years ago. It's pretty recent. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is my situation is certainly not typical. Okay. And you'll, everybody will figure that out. So maybe my solution was a little easier just because of the scenario. Yep. Um, and secondly, I hope to God, nobody ever has to experience what I had to experience because it was brutal. I'm not even going to lie. Um, so what happened last year, my parents split up. Um, so, <laughs> so, and they were both here at the agency. So then suddenly I had to, that's when the ownership came down. Okay. That's when I became the big kahuna as it were. Yep. I inherited, I got the whole agency. I had, I, I became a building owner. <laughs> um, oh boy. Everything and, got split um, up. <laughs> oh man, it was, it was insane. And then they were both still here at the agency. And I thought, how in the world? And it was not pleasant at all. Okay. And so I had to figure out very quickly, how am I going to handle this? Because I've always had a small staff. So I wasn't really able to say to mom, you know, I, I can't use you because I still did need her mm -hmm. for some basic, you know, clerical and other things. Um, so at that point I had, how many, was it just last year? Or was it two years ago? Maybe it was two years ago. Well, it was been recent, but anyway, um, so I had to figure out how am I going to do this? And it was, I mean, talk about sleepless nights. It was pretty, it was pretty hateful. So, because they couldn't be in the same space together at all under any circumstance. So I finally said, okay, here's what we're going to do. I said, you guys are going to have different days that you're here. Okay. You're going to be here. You know, dad, you're going to be here on these days. Mom, you're going to be here on these days. Never the twain shall meet. Yep. Okay. And believe, believe it or not, that worked. It did work. Okay. Then unfortunately I went through some staff turnover. I had a couple people leave. And then all of a sudden the only licensed people were dad and I. Uh, mom never did have a license. Not once. Yep. And I, and, and I had just hired a new person. I needed to train that person. And I told her, I said, mom, I said, I, I said, I said, you need to retire. I said, because I need the person 
with, in fact, I no, the person who I'd hired hadn't even started yet. So it was dad and I, and I said, I've, I can't, I said, now everybody's got to be here five days a week. And I said, you guys can't be in the same building together. I said, so somebody's got to go. And I said, my only option is to let go of the person without the license, because I need the person that has the licensing credentials to do the work, yep. you know, make policy changes, do quotes, you know, answer coverage questions, you know, the, the night, the stuff that we do every day. And I just, I had to have that conversation with her in my office. And we sat here amazingly enough. She was like, I, I understand that. So it could have gone down a lot worse, but having to have that conversation, are you kidding me? It was the most brutal thing I have ever had to do in my life, you know, because basically I'm firing mom. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm doing. And she helped dad start the agency, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, she, she was here from day one, but I had to make it as a, it was a business decision. I had to take the emotion out of it because otherwise the work here wasn't going to get done. We were going to have angry customers and it was going to be a nightmare of late nights and early mornings and weekends for me. And I, I was not willing to do that. I could not do that. I think everybody um, needs to stop and rewind that for 30 seconds and re-listen to the fact that this is a business decision. This isn't personal. And this is the only way the agency is going to succeed. Because I think that's the the story, right? That is yes. the solution. So everyone's like, how do I do this? How do I make that change? How do I have that conversation? Well, this conversation is never going to go well. It doesn't matter, period. So you might yeah. as well put the hat on that says, hey, I am the owner here of uh, the agency or, you know, partner of the agency. We need to, you know, make a business decision. And yeah. here's why. And, and, you know, the person that, you know, initially posted uh, about this was talking about how staff was leaving because they couldn't yeah. deal with, I don't know, mom, grandma, you know, somebody um, yeah. that was just coming in and, you know, just didn't have the right attitude. And, right. you know, that's the writing on the wall, right? Yeah. That's the solution. There is no, you know, what's your alternative? You know, late nights, right? Weekends, mm -hmm. you might as well just branch off and start your own agency. Yeah. If, if you're going to, you know, put up with certain things and I yep. know it's difficult, but if you don't have the conversation with the business hat mindset on and not the um, family mindset on not, oh man, Thanksgiving dinner is going to be awkward. It's more <laughs> of, you know, Hey, if I'm going to, you know, succeed in life, if the agency is going to succeed, if you want my health to succeed because I can't work 80 hours a day, um, you need to make the right calls for the business. And this is why there's a problem and your, your thing is to fix it. Now, I love how you, you know, split them up day wise in the beginning, right? So, you know, you come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you come in Tuesday, Thursday, and you know, everybody can be happy for a little while that could work depending on what everybody's situation is, you know, and now that everybody's getting a little bit more familiar with the remote uh, uh, work life here, maybe that fits for certain solutions. Yeah. Hey, you're causing disruption in the agency based off of, you know, uh, annoying the staff, you know, all you do is walk, <laughs> ar walk around and, you know, yeah. uh, take yeah. up some time. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, you know, why don't you only come in Mondays and the rest work remote or, you know, you know, some kind of, you know, baby step solution until mm -hmm. maybe they're fully ready, mm -hmm. but you can't just let it go because yeah. as that one person, you know, was saying, you know, he's losing staff members yep. constantly. He's training. He keeps them there a year. They it's, get hard, it's hard enough to find good people to begin with. You've got to take care of your people. Exactly. So, um, you know, obviously we're, you know, we're, we're glad you're through that, you know, that, <laughs> that time frame, uh, and your agency is rolling, um, and, and, and moving. I know you did a recent, uh, rebrand, uh, recently, uh, which came out fantastic. Um, so, you know, things are, they're moving in the right direction. You're, you're, you're rocking and rolling as the, you know, the sole owner of yeah, uh, and the agency. To add to that point, just as a footnote, uh, the last, although it was what led up to, it was extremely diff horrible and difficult and it, it was horrible. Mm -hmm. The last two years have been the best we've had from a culture standpoint, from a, we're just, we're, we're hitting on all cylinders. And that is a fantastic feeling. It has never been like that. I have people that buy in, people that see what I'm trying to accomplish. We have the, the branding that cements that vision. You know, people are adults. They are putting in their work. They are, you know, trying to live up to that, you know, our messaging. 
Um, it, it's actually been fun. Holy Toledo, who would have ever thought? Well, I mean, and that, you know, that's a great story to, sh to, to tell people, right. You know, so it's, we, we were talking before we got on about how, you know, just life is crazy and, and exhausting. And, you know, it brings us back to when you have a newborn at home, how it's difficult with, you know, you know, that you're going to have sleepless nights or you're going to be up all night. And, you know, even now later on in life, you know, kids are different and, and, you know, you know, scenarios are different, but you still can feel that exhaustion sometimes. And I think in business, when you're dealing with emotions, which, you know, every family agency has emotions. And when you're dealing with those emotions, those can get tiresome, right? And mm, absolutely. Your, your story of this is difficult is, and but we got through it and we've had the best two years we've had mm -hmm. is and perfectly, uh, you know, set up for everybody to, to say, hey, we can get through this. We can, you know, we can get through the bad. We know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. We just got to do something. You've got to have that conversation because mm -hmm. now you were forced to with your situation. You were, <laughs> right. you, you, were kinda, you, yeah. you had to hurry that up. You couldn't be yeah. like, yeah, yeah, maybe next year, you know, no, we'll have, no, we'll have no, mom no. maybe we'll retire. Start. It was like, no, by Monday morning, we're having a conversation and somebody's got to do something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that that's that was on the accelerator's plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the people that aren't in the urgency shoes, right? They're mm -hmm. in the ones it's having coming up with a plan. It's having mm -hmm. the, the conversation. Yeah. It's having somebody sit at the other side of the table and say, here's why, you know, and, and we talk, you know, you're in sales, you've got to figure out how to sell them on retirement. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be what's best for the agency, it's the only way around it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I want to, you know, start wrapping this up. Um, you know, obviously this is a guest spot series on this AI podcast network. It is not a full-time, full-time thing. Uh, but I came up with a few questions that I am going to give the people that, uh, jump on with me, um, kind of similar to the way cast does it in the beginning. I'm wrapping it up towards the end, um, to let people dive in a little bit more about Carrie to figure out, you know, what some of the things that you like or would prefer some business related, some not. So um, question number one, if you had to choose between audiobooks or podcasts, what would you choose? Oh my gosh. Cause I don't do either, but I All have right. to make a choice. Okay. Um, audiobooks. Audiobooks. Okay. What is one of your favorite business related books? Uh, start with why Simon Sinek. Okay. Great book. Great. Book. Absolutely. It's my go-to. All right. So this past year has been a very difficult year for um, a lot of people, uh, you know, with the pandemic going on. But what the insurance industry and every industry had figured out was, can you work remotely? Can you um, take a brick and mortar office and send everybody home? Can you do all these different things? Now that hopefully the world is moving into the right direction um, and people are refiguring out what their work environment is going to be. If you had to choose between one, remote work or brick and mortar main street location, what would you prefer for your agency? Brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. You want to know why? Or is yeah. that even relevant? No, why? Why works? Yeah, well, okay. So for me, um, I, I need a separation between the two. I need to have a physical location to go to to get to focus on these things. Because if I'm at home, it'll be like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. And I just... It just doesn't, it won't work. It just won't work. So I know myself and I'd rather have that division. It's important for me. Well, I mean, and everything's here too. So for that matter, I'd have to build on an addition to put a home office on. Yeah. I'm, you know, it's just kind of here I am. You know, and we've always been down here and we're very involved in the community. So this is kind of a, a location for people as well. I mean, it's just, in small town USA, it, it, it does matter still. I mean, I, I think I totally agree. And I found, you know, I worked remotely for about three months during the beginning, we kept our office closed and, mm -hmm. you know, you know, did that and, and my staff was remote and, you know, I was remote and mm -hmm. I found it really hard to separate work from non-work right. and there, there wasn't time. Like, you know, you go to the office between, you know, eight and five and, and then you go home or you, you, you do this, whatever your hours are when I was at home, it was, if I'm not doing something for anybody in my household, like I'm not cooking them dinner, I'm not playing with them, I, you know, right. doing whatever, mm -hmm. I'm working. 
Like there was yeah. no separation. It was yeah. like, I got up and poured a cup of coffee. I said, that'd, exa- that'd be exhausting. I think it was exhausting. Yeah. And you know, it was the start of a pandemic. So, you know, kids were home. My wife's working remote. There was a lot of things what going on. Mm-hmm. It was, but you know, now I look back and some people are like, Oh, I really like working from home. And I'm like, no, like, you know, it's bad enough anyways with technology and having your cell phone right. and people can call you at all times, know, but I literally I was on the computer at all times Ugh. Just because, you know, I had to be ready that at, you know, 1030, I had to jump in and help teach, you know, homeschool the kids while they were oh, yeah, you know, you out of school. That little tidbit. Yeah, you know, so I had to always be prepared that mm-hmm. I might be pulled away from work during the normal work time. So mm-hmm. I need to fill in any gap I have, you know, hey, the water's right. boiling for the pasta. I need to, you know, run over to my email real quick while I did something and then hope that I don't, you know, burn the food. I was, be, I was doing, I, yeah, I, I couldn't do it anymore. It was, nope. it was, it was terrible. So, nope. um, I, you know, I love the hometown, you know, agency and I don't think, you know, no matter what happens in the insurance industry, the space where the competitors are, clients love nothing more than their local agent. Um, they like the fact that there is somebody still there. So there's space for both just depends on preference. Yep. Um, all right. So last question regarding your agency or your ideal agency. Um, if you were to either restart from scratch or, um, change the way you currently are doing things, which would you rather prefer five strong carrier relationships or having access to 20 plus carriers with every market possible? Uh, what is your ideal situation? Uh, smaller carriers. I don't need a hundred carriers or whatever. I just don't. When you're an independent, you have to know too much anyway. Yeah. And there's just better chance for uh, you not to know your stuff and then screw it up. Yeah. So, Perfect. you know, just have, just have a handful of good ones that you can depend on that treat you well and that you can know their products. And um, that's sufficient for me. Awesome. Now um, just to give a little context, when you look at your agency now, personal to commercial, what do you, uh, what's your split? Cause I know you do do both. Oh, I got to think about that first. So you think I know this better, but um Let's see. I probably, I would, I would say, because we're big into Medicare supplements, the life and health piece. We do a fair number okay. of, of. So you got three, you got three, you got three divisions, really. I re- <laughs> we really do actually. Um, I, I would say that ugh, I would, I got to get a calculator to make sure this adds up to a hundred. <laughs> Sorry. I know that's funny. Isn't it? That's um, awesome. I know. I, I would say that we're predominantly personal lines. So I would say 60% easily for personal lines. Maybe if you throw in another 20 for commercial and then another 20 on the life and health, that adds up to hundred. That seems reasonable to me. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're similar, except we don't do the life and health. Mm -hmm. uh, I prefer to do that piece actually. That's my, yeah, Um, absolutely. It's easy. We're about 60, 40, you know, personal to commercial. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I actually much rather the personal side. I'm, I'm a, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't mind the commercial and actually like the commercial when it comes to the relationship side. Completely flip-flop for me, completely. And, and I, you know, I have my core commercial customers. I work solely, you know, I work harder for them than, you know, anybody else would, but I like that, that fact because the relationship's there. Sure. You know, Understood. they're making a business decision and I actually am looking, they look at me like I'm, you know, their attorney and their accountant. Mm-hmm. sometimes mm-hmm. first, right? That's you know, how it should be. And mm-hmm. it should, and it should be that way. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, I like that aspect and that's why in the personal lines, I like that relationship side. So that's mm-hmm. the, the route we go. So, all right, wrapping this up, if uh, somebody wants to reach out to you, wants to pick your brain on anything from blogging to removing a family member from your agency, um, <laughs> what, <done> it all. <laughs> what is the best way somebody can contact you? So, I mean, I- I'm really easy to find. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. But I mean, you can go to the, the website, uh, galvezinsurance.com, which I'll tout Advisor Evolved. I know it's not a commercial for them, but they Woo-hoo. knocked it out of the park on my on, with the branding. Um, it's amazing. But anyway, I'm right there. The office number is there. Uh, my email address is right there. Um, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. I mean, I am all over everywhere. The place. Awesome. It's just not hard to find me. Now, if you call my office, my ladies are good at screening. So don't, you know, we, we try to set things up to talk, but I'm pretty easy to find otherwise. I, I, I love the people that keep calling and like, 
how do you not realize the staff is screening <laughs> the calls by now? Yeah, I just, I don't, you know, and I'm in sales too, but I'm not that kind of a salesperson. I never have been. I'm not going to be all up in your business. And, you know, I, I just, I don't know. That's another topic for another time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Carrie, thank you for chatting with me today. And it was great, obviously, seeing and catching up with you. Absolutely. Um, and uh, thank you. I mean, everyone, you know, do, do a back end research of, of, of Carrie and some of the stuff that she, you know, we talked about early on in the episode. She is one of the, you know, the blogging queens when it comes to insurance, um, has the, the, the knack for it always has. And, you know, it's a, it's a huge tool for any agency to implement into theirs, um, getting some information on the internet to allow Google to find stuff, you know, all those interviews that she did, all those publications that she mentioned, you know, all those were backlinked back to her, to her website. And that was always the, the key for the SEO back in the day. So um, take a look at her, uh, reach out if you got any questions. Uh, and as always, thanks for listening.